welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. Today we're in the basement and I'm going to show you a few things that are kind of interesting. Now these old houses that were built with field stone, um, actually boulders and field stone, what they did is they dry stacked all the walls together like this. And sometimes they would cut the stones a little bit to make them more square. But they're basically dry stacked. And then what they would do is they would mix up lime mortar. Now remember that term for a second. They would mix up lime mortar and they would put this mortar in between the rocks to fill in and it keeps water out, dirt out, bugs, and more importantly kind of stabilizes the wall and keeps it from shifting around too much. Now, here's what happens over time. The, the walls start to crumble out a little bit and so people go down to their hardware store and they buy some Portland cement mortar and then they go shove it in there. Well, in our research we found out that that's not the right thing to do because the old original uh, lime mortar was soft and it was able to move about a little bit and kind of acted like a cushion, kind of like rubber for masonry, if you will. And what happens is, um, because the mortar is so hard, it keeps things from moving. So when things do inevitably move around a little bit, it tends to break the rocks. And that's not what you want. And the other thing about that is that Portland cement will also keep the moisture in. It won't allow it out. And so when that happens, the moisture's got to come out, especially if it freezes. What's going to happen? You're going to start blowing things up. You'll break your rocks, you'll break your bricks. That's definitely not a good thing. So what we're doing is we're, we're chipping out all of the old Portland cement. We're chipping out the fix-all. We're chipping out everything else that people have put in this thing all these years. And we're going back to an original recipe, lime mortar. Let me draw your attention to this brick wall right here. It's a good looking brick wall, right? I mean, just an ordinary brick wall, it's old. But if you look in here, this wall was repointed with Portland cement. And right now it looks pretty good. But let me show you what happens in a few years. This is what happens when you put Portland cement in things. Now, all these bricks were laid up with lime mortar, just like they should have been. But here's what happened. Somebody came along at one point and they slathered the entire wall with Portland cement mortar. Just completely covered it up. Take a look at this. These two are the sole remaining pieces of what once was an entire covering on this brick wall. Now, what happened is over time, water came up from below from the soil, came up through the bricks, soaked them really good. That's called rising damp. And, and then when it got cold and it froze, it literally exploded the bricks because it had no place to go. The water couldn't get out. And so it blew the bricks apart. You can see what the damage that was done. And it also took the, uh, the mortar, which ironically was supposed to protect the bricks, ended up destroying those bricks. You have to have a little sense of humor when you're working on these old houses because you never know what you'll find. As I was chipping away this morning, I found some pieces of old mortar and pieces of concrete that were shoved into a hole and mortared up. We're going to do that correctly and we'll show you how that works. So. The first thing we're going to do is, is clean that out. I'm going up here with a shop vacuum and I'm going to vacuum up all the dust, dirt, and loose debris. Since I took out all the old brick, mortar, concrete, and rubble, we need to put something useful back in there. So we went down to a landscape supply and we bought some stones. I'm going to take this stone and put it up in here like that. And here's another one. So I'm basically dry fitting the new section here. That doesn't fit very well, so let me flip that over. Okay, that feels much better. So I'm just going to fit a bunch of stones across here and then let them sit. So like I mentioned before, the old timers used lime and sand to make their mortar. They didn't use any Portland cement like modern people do. Let me tell you about the concept of sacrificial mortar. So let's say you have brick or you have stone. Well, if something's going to move, and believe me, they are going to move, would you rather break your bricks or would you rather break your mortar? Of course, you want to break your mortar because your mortar can be repointed. And that's the whole point of sacrificial mortar. Your lime will break down and eventually it becomes crumbly and the whole thing just starts to fall out. That's great. It's done its job. It served its purpose. Now your job is to rake it out 
mix up some more lime mortar, some fresh lime mortar, put that back in there and make it look like new. A good mortar pointing job will last decades. Now again, let me stress the fact that you do not want to use Portland cement because it won't break and your bricks will break instead. You don't want that. You want to use lime mortar. This is a great example of what lime mortar is supposed to do. After it's lived its life and broken down, it starts to flake out of there. Now we took a, a vacuum and we cleaned this all out and see if, how far back that mortar is. Now, if this wall was still sound and wasn't in such bad shape, we would go ahead and mix up new lime mortar and then repoint all these bricks. Unfortunately, that's not the case here, so this wall has to come down. Before we hammer the wall, we need our personal protective gear. Let's talk more about lime mortar. There's three ingredients to it. One is sand. The sand needs to be mason sand, not play sand and not tube sand. It must be mason sand. For the second ingredient, we are using hydrated mason's lime. Now it must be the mason's lime, not the agricultural and not the garden lime. Those are two different kinds. And the third ingredient is water. Three parts mason sand. This is the mixing tub we're going to use. It's just plastic, basic tub, and then we'll spread all of our sand out. And one part hydrated mason slime. careful not to breathe this in when you're pouring it out. It does absorb moisture really well. Now it's time to mix it. I'm wearing gloves because lime is very caustic. It does burn the skin. So try not to get it on your skin anywhere. If you do, just wash it off with water really fast. Let's mix it up. Notice there's no water in it yet. We want to get the dry mix all completely mixed together and evenly mixed. This is thoroughly mixed. You can see it's the same consistency all throughout. Notice you see a lot of the little pebbles and stuff. That's only because our sand has a little bit of moisture in it, so some of it clumps up already. But you can break these apart. If your sand is really dry, you won't have these little clumps quite yet. When you're adding the water, be sure and add just a little bit at a time. You're gonna slowly sneak up on it. A little bit can go a long ways. Let me show you what I mean. Now we'll mix this up and then I'll show you what that looks like. We're definitely gonna need more, but I'll show you how far that goes.
So keep mixing, keep adding a little bit of water. When this one's ready, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, we've come to a point. I wanna show you how to test it, see if it's ready. Bring it down. All right, let's test it. That's good. Moist, but not soupy. We're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. While it's sitting, we're gonna fill in our holes with some stones. We've taken out the old mortar and we vacuumed it all out. Now, before we put in the new mortar, we need to wet it all down. We want it to be good and wet. Make sure you get down in the crevices. And then we can put in our new mortar. We put the mortar on the bottom to start with just to get the stone in place and we're going to go all along the bottom of all of these and then we'll come back and we'll fill in the rest of it with the lime mortar. This is the finished product. Now the lime mortar does take longer to cure than Portland cement and by longer I mean it's not going to be done in the first day. It may take up to a week, maybe a little longer, depends on how thick you've put it, but it'll take time to dry and cure completely. After it's completely cured, use a stiff bristle brush and scrub off the loose sand. It's a lot of work to completely redo a basement foundation like this, but a good house starts with a good foundation. And if you do it right and use good materials, this will last for decades and decades, maybe even 100 years, or in the case of this house, 180 years.